Glory be to God. Uh, we want to look at, I've already said that our theme for this month of April is the love of God. The love of God. But let's start looking at what I call some lessons of Easter. Because today uh, is Easter Sunday. And across the world, we are marking the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, this um, past days, Friday, we had uh, Good Friday to today, the resurrection morning. Uh, remembering the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I always say, don't forget the ascension as well while remembering the death and the resurrection because he didn't stop there. Yeah, even though doing it in terms of time of celebration, it's been broken into the Easter, death and resurrection. But the total picture is even remembering birth, death, resurrection and ascension. But at least at this point, death, resurrection and ascension of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because by his ascension, he sits at the right hand of the Father, having all power, authority, dominion over every creation of God in heaven and on earth. And he is Lord. Glory be to God. So some lessons of Easter. If you were following some of my write-ups, either on Facebook or on WhatsApp, I encourage everyone to start on Thursday to read from Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26 and take some key lessons. Um, so if you started on Thursday and you read Matthew chapter 26, you will see there that Jesus stood trial <laughs> and then continued from that trial, from betrayal to trial and from there to uh, condemnation, yeah? Praise the name of the Lord. And then five Friday, crucifixion. And Saturday looked like everything was so silent. I call it silent Saturday. But while it looks silent to human beings, to his, uh, um, the agent of the devil who crucified the son of righteousness, the son of God, they did not know that things were happening in the spirit. Hallelujah. Jesus was gaining the victory. God was gaining the victory, total victory over the devil and over everything that had hindered human beings. Glory be to God. And on Sunday, uh, so that was Matthew chapter 20, uh, part of tw Matthew chapter 27. And then Sunday, we begin to talk about Matthew chapter 28. Glory be to God, the resurrection, which is where we are today. So very quickly, some lessons of Easter. The greatest lesson of Easter is the love of God. The greatest lesson of Easter is the love of God. John chapter 3, verse 16, we know that scripture very well. The Bible clearly says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world, the love of God for the world, for humankind, God truly, really, greatly loves humankind to the extent that he gave his only begotten son. And his son, Jesus Christ, demonstrated this love by giving himself for us. Praise the name of the Lord. So in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, Romans 5, 8, the Bible says that God demonstrated his love towards us. 
in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrates his own love toward us. In that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Just pause for a moment and think of this love. Scarcely would another man die for a righteous person. That same scripture continues if you go to verses 6 and 7. But not to talk about a sinner, yet Jesus died for us. We were the ones guilty of God's judgment and punishment. But Jesus took our place. Oh, what a great love. Jesus himself declared in John chapter 15, verse 13. John chapter 15, verse 13, he said, Greater love has no man than this, that a man should lay down his life for his friends. So that sets the standard of the highest love that God demonstrated for us. That sets the standard of the extent of love that Jesus Christ demonstrated for us. Beloved, I want you to take a personal reflection on God's love for you. The same Romans chapter 8. If we go to chapter 8. It says, that in verse 32, he said, He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? This is how deep, how high, how mighty, how wide, how great the love of God is. God loves you. God loves me. God loves our families. God loves humankind. No matter how you feel or what you may think, know that God loves you. And this moment is time to come to this love. Come and experience this love. So John chapter 3, verse 16, the simplest scripture I would imagine that, and the commonest, clearly gives us this love, the demonstration of this love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him, whosoever receives him, whosoever accepts him. So the problem is not God loving us. The problem is for us to receive and accept this love. Would you accept the love of God? Would you stop that worry, that tension, that depression? because you think all hopes are gone. And just turn to God and say, I accept your love. I accept Jesus. I receive Jesus. That's for me the biggest lesson of Easter, that God gave his son. And his son came despite the pain and pangs of death. Despite the shame, he accepted to lay down his life. Greater love has no man than this, that a man should lay down his life for his friends. Jesus did it for you. Jesus did it for me. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's quickly look at the other lessons. Have we set the, spent time in the greatest lesson of Easter. Number two lesson of Easter is mercy, mercy. The same John chapter three, verses 17 and 18 says that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. 
18, he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So mercy, God already has given us, shown us mercy. Even those who killed Jesus were forgiven. Because Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, what they are doing. So mercy is already given to all humankind. But you have to receive this mercy. You have to accept this mercy. As verse 18 there says, it says, he who believes in him is not condemned. We deserve punishment for our sins, for our rebellion against God. But God has given his son and the mercy of God covers us. All he's asking us to do is to believe and receive him. But he who does not believe is condemned already. So, mercy of God is available. We are the ones to either accept the mercy or reject the mercy. If we reject Jesus, it means we are saying we are stand condemned. We stand the judgment of God. It is a choice, mercy. James 2.13 says, for judgment is without mercy. That's how God's judgment will be. I know sometimes some people will say, ah, will God destroy all humankind? Judgment is without mercy to the one who has shown no mercy. However, mercy, when mercy is shown, then mercy triumphs over judgment. So God has given his mercy through his son, Jesus Christ. And that mercy triumphs over every other judgment, even the judgment of God. Wow, this is great. Number three, lesson of Easter is forgiveness. Forgiveness, and we see this in Luke chapter 23, verse 34. Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. They know not what they are doing. So, forgiveness. Number four is power of God. But let me stress that number three again, that you have been forgiven. It means you have been forgiven. We have been forgiven. But you will have to receive that forgiveness. In fact, we will again still um, reflect on that. Um, as we mentioned the case of the thief uh, that was with Jesus, whom Jesus forgave. The point is that you have to ask for the forgiveness, even though God already has forgiven us. But you have to acknowledge that forgiveness and receive it. A lawyer once told me um, in their practice that they have a saying that um, pardon is not pardon. In the law practice, that pardon is not pardon until he that is pardoned accepts the pardon which means a judge can sit and say, okay, you are pardoned. And the person who was pardoned could say, I don't accept it. And if he says so, then it doesn't stand because it is his case. I can draw the um, analogy of that to what we're talking about here. God has forgiven us. Jesus declared, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. And we have already read that scripture, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Number four, power of God, the power of God. I want us to look a bit at this. Matthew chapter 27, 45, and then we'll read 50 down. Matthew 27, 45. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, 
Ella, Ella, Lama Savashtani. That is my God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? Let's move to 50. So, Jesus on the cross, the entire firmament turned dark. You can see, say now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over the land. Darkness. Power. There is raw power of God demonstrated through Easter. Let's look at 50. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. 51. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two, up to bottom, and the earth quaked and the rocks were split. That same power is with you. That same power is with us. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. 53. And the graves were opened and many bodies, sorry, 52. And the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. Power. The veil tore on its own accord. The earth, there was earthquake, the earth shook. Glory be to God. The grave. By that shaking, broke open. And the resurrection power, the life that is in Christ Jesus, raised the dead. Glory be to God. Raw power of God was demonstrated. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, when Jesus resurrected, the Bible says, and Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. If we look at verse 1, he said, now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to the tomb, and behold, there was a great earthquake, that earthquake again. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. Whatever is a stone that is a barrier in your life, the earthquake of the resurrection power of God will shake it out in the name of Jesus. Fear not, people of God. There is raw power of God available to you available to me by reason of Easter. Glory be to God. Number five, victory over grave, death, sin, and all forms of evil and Satan. Victory over grave, death, sin, all evil, and Satan. Number six, Resurrection and eternal life. Resurrection and eternal life. John eleven twenty five. 25. Jesus already spoke there. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. And if we look in Luke, that we read before chapter 23, and look at 42 and 43, you will see the story I mentioned earlier about the thief that was crucified with Jesus. Let me quickly look at that uh, from verse 42. He said, then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, as shortly I say to you today, you will be with me in paradise. So Jesus guarantees eternal life. He guarantees eternal life. And as I mentioned, that we have to ask, so you could see there were two thieves that were condemned here. And one decided to um, ridicule and accuse Jesus, while one decided to ask for mercy. And Jesus showed him mercy. So you have to ask for the forgiveness. There is raw power available, and there is resurrection and eternal life guaranteed through Easter. Number seven, which is the last point I want us to consider, is endurance. 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 
No matter what you are facing in life, if you are a Christian, if you know God, endure, because your God will come through for you. Hebrew chapter 12, verse 2, says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Endurance. Jesus despised the shame. He endured and went through all that. At Gethsemane, he prayed. He prayed. His, he, his heart was heavy. He was sorrowful. He said, Father, ah, if it is possible, let this cup pass away from me. But then he knew he came for this to be fulfilled, the will of God to be done. So he surrendered to the will of the Father. He surrendered to the will of the Father. I just want to read that and round off this lesson so we can pray. Matthew chapter 26. Please open with me to verse uh, 38. Verse 38. He says, then he said to them, my soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. 39, he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, praying, oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. 40, then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, what, could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. 42, again, a second time he went away and prayed, saying, oh, my father, if this cup cannot pass away from me, unless I drink it, your will be done. Jesus surrendered totally to the will of God. May we today, knowing the love of God that is so deep, that is so high, that is so wide, that is so great, may we surrender totally to the will of God. No matter what you may be going through, take the lesson of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our master, the savior of mankind, of humankind. He endured the shame of the cross because of the joy that was set before him. And today we are all the fruit of that his endurance. Glory be to God. I want us to pray now. I want us to take real sober reflection of our lives and yet with joy, knowing that we have, we have victory. God has given us victory. What are you going through? What is going through in your life? Reflect on this lesson. I know that you have victory. Victory over everything. Jesus has conquered all for you. And the love of God is with you. The love of God is with us. God bless every one of us. Now let us pray. I want us all to talk to God and say, Heavenly Father, thank you for the lessons of Easter. We have just taken a few of them. Thank you for your love. Now, in my life, Father, give me victory. Every challenge, whatever has been the hindrance, the limitation, give me victory. Let the resurrection power manifest in my own life. Let all these lessons that you have taught me today guide my life. 
go ahead and pray for yourself. Pray for yourself, pray for yourself. We're going to take a few more prayer points using these lessons, using this manifest power of God. Go ahead and pray for yourself, pray for yourself. Hand over those challenges. And if you have not given your life to God, you have not surrendered to Jesus. As you have heard, God's forgiveness is already made available to us. God is just waiting for you to receive him, to accept. Then the forgiveness rests on you. If you have not given your life to Jesus, go ahead and pray now. And pray and say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying for me. I accept your sacrifice. Now I ask, forgive me all my sins, almighty God. Let the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, cleanse me. Now give me your Holy Spirit and transform my life by your spirit to do your will. For the rest of my life, I promise that as you give me grace and strength to serve you, I will serve you, Lord. Help me to fulfill all your will and your purpose for my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Now, if you have prayed that prayer, join me as we pray. A few more prayer points for the month of April. Very specific. The month of love and mercy of God. Open your mouth again and say, Father God, I thank you for your love and your mercy. Now, Lord, I pray that your mercy goes before me in this month of April. Mercy of God, go before me in this month of April. And let every crooked part, whatever has been a challenge in my life, by your mercy, O oh God, remove that challenge and give me victory. Help me, Lord. The one I need to climb over, let me climb over. The one that needs to be removed, Father, remove it. The one that needs to be shattered by your resurrection power, shatter it. In this month of April, I dwell in your love and your mercy. And let your resurrection power shake like the earthquake. Shake whatever is not of God out of my life, out of my family, in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray that prayer for yourself. Pray that prayer. Whatever is not of God in my life, whatever is not of God in my family, whatever is not of God in my business, whatever is not of God in my ministry, whatever is not of God in my career, in my office, in my finance, in anything that concerns me, Father God, by the resurrection power of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that resurrection power that brought Jesus from the grave, from the dead, that Power, raw power that caused, it, caused the earth to shake. Oh God, let your earth quake. Remove whatever is obstacle in my life and in my family. Let your earth quake. Remove whatever is obstacle in the life of all these your children that are connected upon this platform now. In the mighty name of Jesus, in this month of April, let your mercy go before us. Let your mercy go before everyone here, everyone connected upon this platform. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, our Lord and our God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. I think this will be it, and then we'll share a few more things. Eternal life has been guaranteed. Eternal life is life forever. God has given us eternal life through Jesus Christ. And that eternal life, oh, it's awesome. You know, the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 2, it says from verse 1, now there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And then it goes further to say, for who walk not, okay, to complete it, who walks not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Say, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. Open your mouth and say, Father God, 
by the death, resurrection, and ascension of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You have given me eternal life. I thank you for that eternal life. And now, Lord, by the power of your eternal life that you have given to me, the power of life, the power of the spirit of life, let that life manifest in me, manifest in my physical body, manifest in my spirit, manifest in my soul, manifest in everything that concerns me, in all dimension of existence. Physical, material, spiritual, mental, social, emotional, every aspect of my life, let that eternal life manifest. And pray, say, Father God, by that eternal life, by the power of your spirit, keep me in your righteousness, that all the days of my life, I will serve you and I will do your will. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd. And you said, nobody, no power can pluck me out of your hand. Keep me in your hand. I abide in you, Lord Jesus. Help me by your spirit to abide in you forever, to dwell and live for you forever. Now pray, say, Father, help me to fulfill all your will and your purpose for my life. And let that your will manifest in my life and in my family in this month of April and for the rest of the year 2021. Thank you, Almighty God, for hearing and answering our prayers. For we have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now join your voices with me and let us pray for the whole world. Pray with me and say, Heavenly Father, let your mercy cover all the nations of the earth. And by your mercy, Lord, remove the plague of coronavirus from the world. Restore your peace in the world. And let your righteousness cover the entire world. Let there be a revival. And let men, the eyes of understanding of people, be open to see and know their Savior and Master, Jesus Christ and to accept him, and to receive eternal life. Thank you, our Lord and our God, for we are prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So, do we have anybody who wants to give, share a word of testimony, a word of thanks to God, anybody? Okay, if there is none, our theme, as we've said for this month, is the love of God. Our text is taken from Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 5. So let's uh, open that as we round up. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. What does the Bible say there? Read it with me. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been shed, has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. May that love of God abide with you and your family in this month of April and for the rest of your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Brother Pius, if you don't mind, can you just say the closing prayer for us? Yeah, thank you, Pastor. Uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh Lord, Father, King in heaven, we just want to thank you for yet another opportunity to be in your presence and, and to know the essence of our faith, that if Jesus was not able to die and rise on our behalf, we will have nothing to, to, to believe on or to look forward to. Because yes. he has risen, yes. we have faith that we will rise with him one day. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 
that's the message of today. And we take it in, in all ramification and pray, O oh Lord, that we will continue to reflect on this because that's the substance of our faith. Thank you, Lord. Lord, even for as many as have logged on to this platform today, I pray that they will be lifted up and Amen. every challenge and every life experiences that they are going through, looking up to you. Yes. Father, may they through these messages today, you know, yes. see Lord, a new yes. life at the yes. end of the tunnel yes. and trust you even more. Yes, to the, to the end that they will come with testimonies and glory unto your name. Yes. Thank Lord. you, Lord, for the sacrifice of your, your love. And thank you for the sacrifice of your life. Yes. It's not because you, it was not possible for you to avert the death on the cross, but you did it for our sake. Yes, Lord. I just want to thank you, O oh God. Be yes. thou exalted. Yes. Be thou magnified, O oh Lord, for we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, brother. And happy Easter once again to every one of us. Have a peaceful, blessed week. The love and mercy of God go with you this week, this month, and for the rest of your life in Jesus' name. This is where we will close and bye-bye.